Hiya, welcome back. Look at this. How excited am I? First trip of 2023. Uh, I'm up at Beadnell because I've got a very tiny weather window. In fact, I've had to hang out in the car park for a couple of hours just to make sure this wind was going to drop off as forecast because I'm fishing on my own today. Uh, that means it's midday, so I'm not going to mess about because I've only got about maybe four and a half, five hours of daylight left, if that. So I'm going to head straight out to the barnyard. I'm going to stick the weedless plastics on, see if we can't pull up a pollock, a cod, a coley, and maybe, maybe a little bit early, a ras. I'll see you over there. Right, so here we go. First drop of 2023. I'm excited. Let's hope it brings worth fish. Um, I'm going to stick a bit of the stinky stuff on. What have I got here? This is the signature squid. It's sticky bait stuff. I don't know if it makes any difference, but uh, it certainly can't be doing any harm. So I'm going to stick a little bit of that on. We're going to get straight down there and see if we can't catch ourselves that first fish of the year. I've got one of those storm... GT360 weedless shads on because I quite like them. Uh, they're in 40 gram these ones and with it uh, being a little bit breezy out here today the drift might be a little bit fast so I thought I would go for something a little bit heavier. Here we go. Oh I'm in. Get in. <laughs> An actual fish unfortunately the uh, lens is now facing directly into the sun. But uh, hey, first drift, first fish of 2023. I'll, uh, I'll turn the camera around once we get it up to the top. Hey, it doesn't feel too bad either. Get in. There it is. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, that's not a bad one to start with, is it? There you go. Look at that. I'll just uh, spin this kayak around so you can see the fish. Give us two seconds. Right, I'll just uh, get the lens out of the sun for you there. Come on. There we go. Hey, I'm pleased with that. It's a big fatty, this lad. There we go. Right, let's uh, give myself a little bit of slack. You all right, mate? We're going to let you go in a minute. Give myself a little bit of slack. First fish of the year. Chaos in shoes. Um, you like that, didn't you? Hey, it's not a bad one, is it? Look at that. Get in. So that's the blank off. Have you seen the belly on him? I wonder what he's been munching. Anyway, nice to see you, pal. Let's get you back. And he's off. There we go. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> yes, get in. <laughs> Brilliant. Second fish of the year. Um, hopefully I'll be able to show you it without having to go on a little merry dance with the motor because uh, the sun's gone in the lens, but I think that's what's about to happen. But uh, we'll get this up and we'll have a look at it. How exciting is this? Oh, get in. That's nice, that. That will do. Look at that. Brilliant. Right, I'll just uh, give myself a little bit of slack and we'll get this unhooked. And we'll give you a look at it and then we'll put it back. There you go. Brilliant. Look at that. He liked the krill spray, didn't he? Right, we'll see you later, pal. We're doing all right, aren't we? This is traditionally the worst time of year for fishing on this coast, but we've got two in the bag. We haven't even been here an hour. Brilliant. I'm going to have a little, another little lucky squirt just in case. And uh, we'll get back down there and we'll get ourselves another one, eh? Oh, I'm in. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, I don't think it's a monster, but uh, we'll get it up and have a look at it. Oh, this is good, isn't it? Let's get this up. Let's put up a little bit of a fight now. Ah, just a tiny fella, little coley, kiting in the uh, tide there it was. Let's just uh, get myself turned around so you can see it. Oh, is it a coolie? No, it's a little... Let's have a look at it properly. I'll tell you in a moment. It is a coolie, yes. Look at that. I told you we'd get one of those today, didn't I? See you, pal. So, uh, uh, somebody in the comments asked us to uh, give them a rundown of my safety equipment, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to stick with what I've actually got on me person, because that's nearly all of it. Uh, otherwise, it would be a very long segment in this video. So, first and foremost, I've got my dry suit on. 
that splits opinion. Not everybody wears a dry suit all of the time, but I do. I'm not saying they're wrong and I'm right. All I'm saying is I, I'm working to the theory that if I fall in and lose me kayak, like it drifts off or it sinks, I'm gonna rely on that to save me life. So that's why I wear a dry suit, especially in February in the North Sea. It'll give you hours, it'll add hours to you. Oh, this is a fish. Get in. <laughs> so as I was saying, wearing a dry suit will give you a few hours to be rescued by somebody else. I'll tell you what, we'll just concentrate on getting this fish up first and then uh, I'll run you through the rest of my safety stuff. Oh, it feels all right, this, you know. I was just thinking there, it's been a little while since we've had a fish. Uh, mind you, the tide is fair racing through now, like so. Anything's gonna feel big. It feels like a coddling. Oh, it feels quite noddy. Hey, it's hurting me on this. Hey, I'm dying to see this. So the fishing's been pretty good for this time of year so far. I've only been out a couple of hours and this is the fourth fish. Feels like the biggest one as well, so. Oh, let's get it up and have a look at it. Oh, get in. Oh, that is a beaut. Oh, that'll do. Look at that, size of the head on this chap. Where's that hook I'm gonna wear? I'm not gonna risk it. I'm gonna put my finger in there in his mouth and bring him up. Look at him. What an absolute beauty. Oh, hey, I'm pleased with that. Right, we'll just get you unhooked, mate, and then we'll show you to people, show you to the people at home, and then we'll get you back. He's got sharp teeth, and he's just bit us. Easy, easy, easy. Look at that. That's not too bad, is it? That felt massive pulling it against this tide. There you go. Let's put him back. See you, pal. Yeah. So as I was saying, dry suit. Uh, this is a PS330 Extreme by Typhoon. Loads of people wear them. They're really good dry suits for kayaking, you know. Really easy to get into as well because they zip around the waist rather than around the back like my old dry suit used to. Uh, underneath it, I've got a thermal fleece on, a Lumo one. I think they're really good value for money. And of course, I've got all my thermal layers under there as well. Um, the last thing I'm going to run through, then, oh no, two more things. So I've got my PFD on. It's a personal flotation device. This one is a Chinook. NRSOS fishing. Um, it's what one thing it isn't is a life jacket because that's a different thing altogether. A life jacket is designed to keep you afloat on the surface of the water, uh, even if you're unconscious, until rescuers can get to you. Buoyancy aids or PFDs are designed to allow you to rescue yourself. Oh, just missed that fish. Allow you to rescue yourself. Um, so they'll, they'll aid you with buoyancy, but they won't restrict you from fishing. Um, also, I've got me palm gradient boots on. These were a present to myself for Christmas. They, uh, they were about 85 quid because they didn't have the box with them on Amazon, so that's an absolute bargain. And uh, they're great. So much room in the toes for getting your dry suit socks into. And my feet are quite warm. Normally, they'd be freezing by now because tight boots stop the blood flowing in your feet. And of course, if the blood's not flowing, your feet are going to get cold. So the last thing, the last bit of safety equipment is my VHF radio which is, in that po which is in that pocket. But for now, we'll just pull this fish in, eh? Get in. <laughs> I love it. First week of February as well, you know. I'm really pleased. Nowhere near as big as the last one, but I'm, uh, I'm very happy to see it. There we go. Give you a look at him. It's getting quite dark now, so I might have to adjust the camera in the minute. But uh, there he is, perfectly formed. See you, pal. So as I was saying, yeah, the VHF radio, uh, that's in this pocket here. Mine is a standard Horizon 300XE. Uh, I'm going to upgrade it soon because I want one with DSC calling on. This one floats, it flashes, and it's waterproof, and those are the three important things you need. But DSC is a, a digital way of identifying yourself when you make a call. So uh, the Coast Guard knows where you are and who you are without you having to tell them. Oh, oh it's a snag. Damn it, it was going so well. I'm going to go around the other side of it and see if I can get this back because it's me lucky lure. Well, it's been lucky so far, hasn't it? Yay, we got it back. It's always worth doing that, you know, just nipping around the other side of the snag and seeing if you can get it. Right, I'll just uh, I'll just reset. We're back in a better position. And then uh, we'll see if we can catch a few more fish, eh?
Right, so we're back at the start of that drift now. It's uh, coming up to three o'clock. I just missed a fish there. Coming up to three o'clock. So with a bit of luck, we'll get two more drifts in because the drifts are lasting about 40 minutes at the moment with the way the tide's running and the ground I'm going over. It's like kind of, well, it's good ground for about 40 minutes and then I get too shallow uh, with the way the tide's running. Uh, sun's gone in behind the clouds, which makes filming a little bit easier because uh, action cameras tend to underexpose when it's cloudy, overexpose when it's sunny. So you can adjust for one, but not both. So when it's changing all day, it makes it really difficult. At the moment, the cloud it's cloudy and it looks like it's going to stay that way. So I've upped the exposure compensation on the camera there. So hopefully you can see it a little bit better. Oh, get in. <laughs> Brilliant. Right on cue, that fella. I think it's going to be another codlin. Fantastic. Hey, this is pretty good fishing for this time of the year, you know. It's very promising, isn't it? Hopefully we'll pull a few pollock up as well at some point on this drift, because it would be nice to get the first pollock of the year. If I don't mind, don't worry, because I'm going to be heading over to Port Logan pretty soon. And I'm sure we'll grab one over there. Right, let's have a look at this chap first. There you go. Lovely codlin. See you, pal. And he's off. Oh, he's left us a message. Oh, it was a bit crusty, that. Maybe it was a message from a previous visitor. Something else I get asked quite a lot is uh, what weather conditions are safe to come out in. Unfortunately, I can't answer that for you. I can only speak for myself because everybody has a different skill level you know so what's safe for one person might not be safe for somebody else uh, what i can tell you though is how i came to the decision that it was all right for me to come out today was i started looking at windy yesterday morning knowing that today would be the only day i'd get out this week and there was a little bit of a weather window and a weather window for me is the wind has been in the west for the last few days so there'll definitely be no lump on the sea here on the east coast and it was dropping below 10 miles an hour um, from around about nine o'clock in the morning. As it turned out, that little weather window moved a little bit further back, so I arrived in the car park and the forecast had changed. As I say, I use Windy, because uh, I use the premium, because it updates every hour and it's the most accurate one, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them, I, I pay for it like everybody else. But so, uh, so that's why I had to sit around in the car park for a couple of hours this morning, because that weather window moved back and I wanted to make sure the wind was gonna drop off before I decided to come out. Because even here at Beadnell, a southwest wind can put a little bit of a swell up inside of the harbour and if you've ever seen the video where I got tipped out in the surf that's exactly what happened that day so as I say it's quite a complicated thing and it's different for everybody else so unfortunately I can't tell people who are new to the sport uh, what, what are safe weather conditions to go out in. Oh I'm in. Get in. Oh hey this feels all right doesn't it? He's uh, putting up a little bit of a scrap. <laughs> Get in, I love it. I love it. Fantastic. Let's have a look, see what we've got. Get in. It's another nice coddle in that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Get up. I love it. It's only just, uh, well, he's not too bad, so I'll take a chance and pick him up on the hook there. There you go. Look at that, he's all right, isn't he? Just uh, knock the bail arm over there, give us a chance. Give myself a bit of slack, I should say, so I can unhook him. Right, so you've done a canny job of that, mate. It's in one side and out the other. These are always the hardest ones. So if you bear with us, though, we'll get you free. There you are. That's that done. Look at that. He's a beaut, isn't he? <laughs> right. We'll get him straight back. Right, so this might well be the last drift because it's uh, it's coming up to half three now, so I don't know how much light I've got left. The sun is sort of in and out behind the clouds over there, but once it goes behind the clouds, it's really dark. Stick a little bit of the krill spray on. We'll get down there. I've really been enjoying using these, uh, what are they, GT? Storm Biscay Shards, I think. I've really enjoyed them. So that's a 40 grammer. And what I've liked about them is, normally if I up the weight to 40 grams, we'll say like a fish black minnow or something like that, the size of the 
lure then makes it unlikely that I'm going to catch a wrasse because it's hard for them to trigger the hook. Um, definitely not going to catch any coolies. But for some reason, with these 40 gram biscay shads, little fish seem to be able to trigger the hooks. So I've had loads of coolies on them and I had loads of wrasse on them last year when I was first trying them out. So yeah, I've really been enjoying using them. Let's see if we can get ourselves another codlin, eh? Or possibly a pollock, that would be better. But I'm not going to complain, like, whichever comes first. I can't believe how mild it is out here today. The water is really warm for this time of year as well, which is uh, freaking us out a little bit. Uh, the fishing's good. I think, you know, we haven't really had a winter, have we? We haven't had a an extended cold spell. I mean, I know I was out fishing in December in sort of minus two and stuff, but it didn't last very long, maybe a week or so. And we certainly haven't had any of those monster storms like Storm Arwen last year. So the water's still crystal clear as well. So I'm kind of hoping those things combined means that there's still a lot of kelp down there, still a lot of fish around, that the, the season will get underway properly a little bit earlier this year because it was quite late last year because all of the good ground got really scoured out by that big storm, didn't it? it? Takes a little while for that to recover, you know. Oh, missed that one. Come back and have another go. It did, yes. <laughs> Brilliant. Took us on the drop there. I mean, in case you hadn't worked it out, that's why the channel's called on the drop. Well, I see on the drop. It wasn't. I wasn't free. Um, free spooling it down. It was uh, on the drop of the jig, as it were, on the action there, on the way down. That's quite often where you get the fish, you see. Which is uh, why the channel is named as such. Anyway, I'll shut up and show you this fish. <laughs> Talking nonsense now. There you go. And you probably already worked that out anyway. There you go, another little codlin. We'll get him away. See you, buddy. So there you go, there's the uh, Storm Biscay shards. Really been enjoying them. I don't think they've got a rattle in them, but the, the way the hook is set up, it acts as a rattle because it's on like a sort of a, a crossbar in the middle of the jig head. And it makes like a nice sort of metallic sort of jingle when you wiggle it about. I think that's the technical term for working a lure, isn't it? Wiggling it about. <laughs> oh, get, oh, missed it. Oh, got it that time, missed it. Oh, there's a few down there. Let it back down, see if it'll come and have another go. Yeah, got it this time. Yes. <laughs> I was too busy gassing onto the camera. I missed the first one. Oh, this feels all right, doesn't it? Wonder if it's the same fish. I think it's a codlin. Wonder if it's the same fish that missed a few times before. Well, this has been great, hasn't it? Loads of fish in February. Get in. I mean, this water is crystal clear and the average size of these codlin is not bad, you know. Normally at this time of year, you're scratching around for small stuff and you're lucky if you get two or three, but uh, hey, I've had a canny day today. Yeah, open your mouth and we'll get the hook out. Can't do anything if you keep your gob shut. I don't want to put my fingers in there and get bit. There we go. We'll get them up and we'll give you a look and then we'll get them back. Easy. Plenty of life in this chap. Out. See you later, buddy. He's drew blood. Can't say I blame him. Must be a terrible inconvenience getting dragged up here to be shown to you lot. So I've given the new rod a good workout today, haven't we? We've christened that all right. It's um, it's a dam IMAX saltwater spin. It's about seven foot four, and it's a, I think it's a ten to forty gram rod. Perfect for what I do. Uh, seven foot. It's about as long as I want to go with a rod. I go up to eight foot sometimes, but uh, anything longer that, than that on a kayak and I find really hard to handle because if you get a tangle around the end, you know, you've got to be able to, to reach it, to undo it. And uh, also the butt section gets too long on longer rods and it gets caught up in your PFD and all of that kind of stuff. So six or seven foot is ideal for me. I'll go up to eight. But uh, as I say, it's performed really well so far today, but I can't wait 
to uh, see what it's like with a proper pollock on it then we'll find out if it's got any backbone and obviously if you're a, a regular viewer of the channel you'll know this rod is to replace oh i missed it this rod is to replace the uh, damn yaggy spin and the pen slammer that are at the bottom of the sea next to uh, st mary's island um so this rod yeah it's 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 more or less the same rod oh no i have to go out the other side and get this snag out it's more or less the same rod as the uh, Yagi Spin. It's just, uh, it's got upgraded hardware to deal with the salt water. Right, let's get over there and see if we can pull this one out. I think we've lost it. Yeah, we did. Right, bear with us. I'll rig up and I'll see you in a little bit. So we're back in business. I've re-rigged. It didn't take as long. Uh, I've gone like for like. I've stuck the same lure on again. I don't see why not. Um, I'll stick a little bit of the smell on and then uh, we'll get down there see if we can't catch another fish uh, before we do that though I'll just run you through the setup quickly so it's just about five or six no maybe four foot of 20 pound fluorocarbon there uh, to a barrel swivel which is tied to the braid by a palomar knot and I've got a little clip swivel there as well the reel I'm using today is a pen spin fisher six or is it four i can't remember there's some roman numerals involved i'll put them up on the screen now it's a cracking little reel it's a two and a half thousand size reel and it's ipx5 as well and it's uh it's lasted as well and it's been dunked as well normally that's the end for a fixed spool reel once it goes under the water but when the kayak tipped last year on that very beach over there this reel went underwater and it still works as good as it did on the day i got it so there you go, I've already told you about the rod as well. It's the IMAX Spin Saltwater Dam. It's a very long name, but it's seven foot odd and it's 40 gram. Oh, get in. I don't think it's very big. In fact, it's tiny. What is this? I was just saying earlier on that these uh, Biscay Shads are all right for the smaller fish. And uh, this proves me point. The lure's nearly bigger than him, but he still managed to trigger it. It's the, the hook's gone on the inside to the outside as well, so it wasn't an accident. That's why I've been enjoying using them, you know, because you can still target the wrasse and that. Even when you go up a size to 40 grams. Look at that, tiny little dude. Absolutely beautiful, though. We'll pop him back. Oh, I'm in. Oh, that was a decent fish. Oh, damn it. I was fannying about with a drag. Oh no, was it back on? Yeah, it came and had another go. Get in, how lucky am I? <laughs> oh, this feels all right, doesn't it? It's uh, putting its tail over the line. I don't like that. It certainly doesn't feel like a small one, does it? Well, maybe coming up backwards yet. Let's uh, get it up and have a look at it. Wow, it feels all right. It's definitely going to be a cod, I think, because of the way it's behaving. And it is. Look at that. Oh, what a beaut. What a beauty. All right, let me uh, get my finger in there and we'll get this up. Oh, he's got sharp teeth, this lad. There you go. Look at that. Right. I'll give myself a bit of slack because he's took it a canny way down. But I think we'll get it out. If not, he'll come home and I'll have him for me tea. But uh, where are my forceps? There they are. Trying not to lose 20 quid's worth of lure while I'm getting them out. There we go. Oh, what a mess. What a mess. Right, I need to sort that box out, like. I need to sort that box out. Right, there we go. Let's have a look. See where the uh, hook is. Oh, hey. Where is it? Let's see if I can get my fingers in there first. That's always my first port of call. Where is it? Where's the actual hook? There we go. So I can see it anyway. So we're in with a chance. Oi! If you hold your horses, buddy, we'll get you away before you know it. Oh, this is proving tricky. Right, where are we? There we go. So, if you stay still, I can get this on there once I've done that. can get that out 
and there's no blood in there, so the jobs are good and he's going back. Look at that, what a beauty. Right, see you later, buddy. And he's off nice and strong. Uh, cut myself, but not the fish. And that's what counts. Happy that he went back. But as I say, if he hadn't made it, he definitely would have got munched because he was more than plate sized, wasn't he? Right, so that's it, we're gonna head in. Hey, what a fantastic first session of the year it's been. I mean, it hasn't been summer busy, but we've had plenty of fish out, haven't we? It's been really good for February because normally this time of year, you're scratching around for small stuff, you know? The water's still warm, the kelp beds are still there, fingers crossed, that means it's gonna be a really good season. Uh, do me a favor, would you, and subscribe to the channel. I bang on about it every single time I put a video up, but it really does make a big difference to that old YouTube algorithm. You know how many different and new viewers YouTube chooses to show your videos to, that sort of thing. Another thing that really helps is a thumbs up, so please give it one of them. And if you want to ask us a question, you want to say hello, suggest a venue, anything at all, do that in the comments down below because I always reply. I'll catch you next time.